I want to introduce you to Adobe's new color tool in Photoshop. And this isn't really a new color tool. It's a respin on an old color tool that they remodeled and reshaped to make actually a pretty awesome tool. And I want to talk about all those features in this video today. Now, if you're seeing this and you're like, I thought I already saw you do this tutorial, Blake. Well, I recorded it once, realized that there's a huge bug in this. I'll talk about the bug and what the workaround is. And hopefully Adobe will have a fix to that. Here's the deal. We have a, a new look for the HSL adjustment layer. So if you go down to your adjustment layers and you put an HSL adjustment layer on here, you are going to see a whole new interface right here in this tool. And what the interface is, is instead of doing a drop down here to go to your individual colors like red, cyan, yellow, green, blue, magenta, you now have those in the form of circles right here. Now I will tell you that the bug that has happened is when you go into the adjustment layers and you put the adjustment layer on. For some reason, there's a disconnect here. So I'm gonna show you the other way to do this. And I learned this from Tony Kuiper. When I put the first video out, Tony Kuiper was like, Blake, there seems to be an issue here. I think it's bugged in the public release. The beta is working just fine right now when you put an HSL adjustment layer on from the adjustment layers window. But for the public version of Photoshop 26.6, this is currently broken. I'm usually not the type to show you anything in the beta software. As a matter of fact, I don't even have the beta software installed. I'm typically not one of those YouTubers who's going to encourage you to download the beta software for the sake of subscribers and views. There are YouTubers out there that do that. You know who you are. Thank you so much though, Tony Kuiper, for showing me this in the comments because uh, it made a huge difference as to how I feel about this new tool that Photoshop has created. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this from the adjustment layer window because the way that this is going to operate the best is if we go up to the contextual toolbar up here, I like to have my toolbar up here at the top of the window and I actually have it pinned up here. So I pin that to this location. Right here, you're gonna see a button called adjust colors. And when you press this adjust colors button, it's not gonna look like it's anything different from making a HSL adjustment layer on here for this image in particular, with the exception of we now have a blue circle here instead of a violet circle here. What's going on here? Well, there's a new feature in here called prominent colors, and I love this new feature. With this prominent colors feature, Photoshop is going to assess and analyze your image and tell you what the most prominent colors are in that image so that you can go in and edit those individually. Like I said, in this image, it's not gonna make that much of a difference, but let's go up to this one, and within the contextual toolbar, let's press adjust colors. What you're gonna see here is that we have six prominent colors that Adobe has determined are the most visually prominent colors that the viewer is going to see in your image. And we can edit within them. And this is pretty awesome. But first, let me go back and show you some of these other features here. So now when you click on any one of these circles after pressing the adjust colors in the contextual toolbar, you're gonna see here that it's gonna give you not just the color when you click on it, but also right here, you're gonna see the degree mark on where it is around the circle in 360 degrees. So here we are at almost zero because this is one of the most prominent colors. Let's, let's reset this to default. And you'll see here that the red is at zero, yellow is at 60 degrees, green, 120 degrees, cyan, 180 degrees, and blue, 240. And of course, magenta will be at 300 degrees. Now these degree marks are important because this will also show you how much you've shifted your color from one degree to the next. And that's gonna be important when we actually start editing these colors. Let's go back here for one more second. What you're gonna see down here is that Adobe made this blending tool much bigger and thank goodness because you almost needed tweezers to get in there and move those sliders before. So much so to the point that I very rarely ever use them. And many of you are probably saying to yourself, I didn't even know that thing existed because it was so small, it was very difficult to adjust. If you were very accustomed to the HSL adjustment layer, you know the power behind that tool. And we will also discuss the power behind this tool. Okay, so really all I wanted to show you on this document here was that our colors now coordinate with the degrees on the color wheel. Let's go over to this image here and I'm going to go ahead and press adjust colors. Now you're gonna see here that we have a very much more random colors than we do on this image here. Uh, these colors are now showing us that our prominent colors exist within these spaces. So once you've pressed the adjust colors uh, button up here to, in your contextual toolbar, you can actually modify these colors within the properties pane. 
if that's where you feel comfortable editing these. I feel much more comfortable editing the colors within this pane than I do from up here, but you can also do it from up here as well. What you're gonna see here though, is that we also have a new eyedropper here, which is really quite fantastic. Back in the day when you were editing in the HSL adjustment layer, you could edit within red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and that was it, RGB, CMY. Now, you can select an exact color that you wanna edit within the HSL adjustment layer, and I love this. So if we click on this color here, this orange color here, what it's telling me is the most, one of the most prominent colors. And I said, well, you know what? I really wish it would have selected one of the reds to be the most prominent colors. I can take this eyedropper tool and I can click on the color red anywhere in that color red that I want to. And now I can edit within that specific color. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw the, the uh, hue way off because I want to show you this tool right down here. Okay, so when I throw this color off, I want you to see that what we've done here is we've basically told that red color to go from zero to 98 degrees. So if we look here, we go from zero to 98 degrees. We've effectively changed the red color from zero to a 98 degree shift around the color wheel to make it green. Now what you're gonna see along with that though is that we also made our oranges green. Why is that? We should just be working within red right? Well, if you look at this slider right here, this actually tells you which color you are working within and how it feathers and transitions out into other colors. So if I only wanted that to be affecting that color of red, I would need to minimize this by grabbing one of these little sliders here and telling it, hey, I only want you to affect red. Don't affect any of the magenta in the process and stop affecting my yellows and my oranges. Now I've just effectively minimized exactly down to that color of red. Now, of course, on a chart like this, it's really easy to see that, but you do want a transition from one color into the next while you're working on your colors. I just wanted to show you this because this is really important when we go to edit on a practical application image. So now I'm gonna click on this image here. I'm gonna go to adjust colors and magically, it picks the colors in the image. This is awesome. At first, I was so disenchanted by this because where this is broken is if you put on an HSL adjustment layer here and then you go down to the drop down and say prominent colors, what'll happen here is it'll show you the prominent colors, but look down here, it's not exactly going to those prominent colors. It's staying with the default colors that were selected. So that's why it is not recommended at this time of the Photoshop 26.6 release to make an HSL adjustment layer if you wanna work within your prominent colors from the adjustment layer selection down here. From what I've been told, that works in the beta from Tony Kuiper, but it does not work right now in the public release. Imagine that. So what we're gonna do here, press that adjust colors button. After we press the adjust colors, we can actually work within these colors within this dialog here. That's kind of resets it and everything's good to go. So what I'm gonna do here is look at the color green. It's telling me that that's a dominant color. So I have the opportunity now to maybe increase the brightness of that color green or darken it, maybe shift the hue of it a little bit. Maybe I want that to look like a little bit more autumn color back there. Maybe even increase that saturation a little bit so it stands out amongst the rest of the colors in the image. I can then move over into the next color, which is going to be my darker blues. I like to take things up really high just to see where it's selecting. So I'll pull it up and then here I might even make that a little bit of a deeper, more rich blue. Okay. Now I'll come over to this color. Now what I want you to see here is that as we look at these colors, look at this chart down here, this slider down here, it's going to show us exactly where this color is plotted and where it's feathering into. So that is a dark blue. We are right here. If we go to a light blue, does it shift much? Not necessarily. So because it's still targeting this range, whatever I do to this lighter blue is also going to affect those darker blues. So this is one of those things where if you have colors that are really close in proximity, when you do this adjust colors, it might not be a good idea to keep pushing saturation in all of these colors, okay? Because it's just gonna make all of those blues more and more and more saturated. Instead, this might be a good opportunity for you to say, you know what? Maybe I need a different color here instead of that blue because I'm just pushing those blues a little bit too far. Here you can select the eyedropper and then select any other color in the image. Maybe I wanna do a lighter green now, choose that color, okay? So now this already has the modifications that I did for the other color that were in there, 
but you can see now I get a little bit of color separation and a little bit of color division from the colors uh, that it had originally selected from my adjust colors. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to continually push the colors uh, when they're so close in proximity because you're just gonna be adding a lot of saturation to that color blue. All right, now we'll hop on over into this color and see what's going on over here. This should be this area right here, but we'll jump that up and there we go, okay? So I typically don't like to take my saturation up too much higher than let's say 15. And usually when I do bring my saturation up, it's a good idea to add a little bit of darkness to it. So it just increases the intensity of the color without necessarily increasing the vibrance or the saturation of it. Let's jump over into another image here and see what happens when we press adjust colors on this one. All right, it's gonna do a pretty good job of giving me some differentiation between colors. Let me assess this real quick. This looks like it's the darker, uh, maybe shadowy skin tone areas. Then we have two differentiations for the skin tones, the medium tones and the light tones. And then we have yellow, which is a very prominent color here, blue and then that pink. Adobe didn't just make a, a minor change to the HSL adjustment layer. Now that I look at this more deeply, Adobe dropped a massive, awesome bomb on the HSL adjustment layer that opens up whole new avenues for color adjustment. Because in the past, like I said, we could only adjust red, yellow, green, blue, cyan, or magenta. Now we can adjust any color that is prominent in our image or any color that we select from our image. And this is quite fantastic. Another thing here is if I double click one of these colors, you'll see that it opens up the color picker. And at this point, it's kind of like using the color picker from over here, but not only can I just click on a very specific color that I want, I can also get a little bit more finite with it with how deep or rich I want that color to be as well. So you have a lot of options now for selecting your colors and modifying the color properties of those colors. This, like I said before, is fantastic. If you happen to watch my first video on this, I wasn't excited about it at all because when I clicked down here to get the prominent colors, the bug kept this from working. I actually thought this tool was colorblind. It's not, <laughs> it's actually color fantastic. All right, so let's take a look at this color here. This is actually going to be our uh, deeper, more shadow rich colors. But again, like I said, as we modify that color, what do we need to make sure we look at? If it truly is just those shadow areas that we want to protect, we are going to have to look at this slider here and see if there's other colors that we can minimize from that. So let me make this a little bit more dark at the same time while I increase that saturation, okay? And then if we look here, this is going to narrow down what is being selected in this color. You know, so if we move it from this side, it looks like we can actually get closer to what's just happening in the uh, shadow areas of that color and not extend it out into those magenta colors. Because if we come over here and start working with that magenta, it's gonna throw a lot of things off, okay? So now as we move this magenta up, what other color here could be getting in the way? Maybe it's on this side in the oranges. So if I move this down, you see we start to block that from being hit while increasing the intensity of that uh, color around it. Now, what I'm doing here is absolutely hideous to this image, okay? But what I wanna show you here is that you can't necessarily just take this stuff for face value anymore. If you're working within this contextual toolbar, you're gonna be missing out on this slider here that is very important. That's why I think it's important to have the properties open while you're working with the HSL so that when you see the color that is here, you can fix the colors from within this space here. Because as you saw, if we really wanted to target just this area, we had to, on this side, pull in the magentas, and on this side, pull in the oranges. And we might even just pull in those magentas as well on this side also, and there we go. So we can even go back over to this color and start making that a little bit more rich. And in those brown areas, that's where we're gonna see that, those deeper, rich brown areas. And anywhere that brown exists is what's going to be affected by this, okay? So that's really important to note that even some of these colors up here are gonna be affected because of how far out this spreads onto our yellow side. So this slider right here, which you may have never used in the past, now has become a lot more important. What I also wanna show is the last thing here is that once you make a modification to your color, you're gonna see the original color at the top and then it's gonna be halved with the new color at the bottom. What you'll also see here is that when we click on this, if we do any hue rotations, it will show us what the original hue was and then what we rotated it to. 
anybody who is a color theory aficionado will absolutely love what Adobe has done in 26.6 to this new and redesigned HSL tool. What I really appreciate about this is that Adobe is giving us something other than an AI update. I am about sick of seeing Photoshop get AI updates without older antiquated tools getting modified in the process. What Adobe has done here is we need to give them a good clap, good round of applause. This is phenomenal. Why do I think that? Because they kept the functionality the same. So if you're an old dog trying to learn a new trick like myself, the interface hasn't changed much. But with this new feature like prominent colors, it gives us unprecedented access to our color. And now we can pick any color we want to edit. I would love to see Adobe do this with some of the other tools in Photoshop, like color balance, maybe even selective color, and a couple other tools that are antiquated that need to be moved into the new age of photo editing. This is wonderful. This new feature is wonderful. Kudos Adobe, very well done. If you could just fix it in the adjustment layer thing, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I love what you've done. Keep up the great work, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna do with some of the other tools in Photoshop now that you've set the bar this high.